Hello everyone and welcome to another video on LabVIEW Advantage. In this video, we'll discuss about the presentation I gave last year during the CLD Summit in India. This presentation is about why and how to use object-oriented programming. In this presentation, we'll compare about the traditional task-based approach against the object-oriented programming approach. So let's continue. Uh, many of you might have discussed that you know LabVIEW is very easy to use. Uh, you can develop applications and everything. But I think like uh, you might actually end up with the scenario when uh, you have written a code, it works perfectly fine, but next time you want to modify the code, it becomes very difficult to understand. Uh, before we begin, we'll capture a little bit uh, about the beginner approach to LabVIEW. So in LabVIEW development environment, uh, there is front panel and block diagram. The front panel provides the user interface uh, through which user can control the flow of application, uh, while the block diagram contains the necessary code in graphical programming language to run the application. So front panel is for the users and block diagram is primarily for the developers. Uh, now we'll discuss a little bit more about uh, user experience. Uh, if you see very clearly, uh, the users are not concerned on how the application was created and how much effort was required to build it. Uh, the user is only concerned about how simple and clear it is, how enjoyable it is to learn, uh, use and navigate, and it should also handle errors generated by the user interface. Uh, we call this user experience or UX. Uh, there are various alternative available for our requirements. Uh, UX defines which device, uh, apps or services we prefer over other alternatives. So this is the deciding factor when the customer actually goes with a specific service provider. On the other hand, uh, developer experience is the crucial thing for the LabVIEW developers. Uh, behind the user interface lies the code written in LabVIEW. Uh, there are various motivations to build an application. This can be for academic, research, hobby, or primarily for work. Uh, but depending upon the approach on how the application was built, uh, determines the quality of application and quality of developer itself. Uh, this is called developer experience or DX. The application uh, might be running perfectly fine, uh, but may introduce issues while changing and maintaining if improperly built. A developer who has access to proper education, training, tools, support and community from which uh, one can build a robust and relatively future-proof applications. The better DX vastly improves user experience leading to returning customers. Uh, in this perspective, uh, the evolution of LabVIEW developer is basically a progression towards improved and enhanced developer experience. Uh, there are four stages in this progression. Uh, the beginner is a developer who uses code and fix approach to the specific problem. Uh, this actually leads to spaghetti code and less or no reusability value. That basically means you cannot reuse this code. Uh, the next level in the evolution is the practitioner. The practitioner uses codes from various sources to the specific problem. Uh, it's mostly the inherited code, either from the Yanai forums, Lavazi forums, uh, or the LabVIEW example itself. Again, uh, it leads to the less or no reusability values. Uh, this can be considered as the CLAD or the Certified LabVIEW Associate Developer Level. The next level is Intermediate Level. And the Intermediate Level Developers uses the proven methods like design pattern to solve generic problem. The result is more robust and scalable codes uh, with more reusable value. Uh, this is considered as CLD Level. Finally, the Advanced Developers uh, uses architectures and communication models to communicate between various modules. Uh, they build large applications which require multiple developer team. Uh, this is considered as CLA level. 
These applications require highly reused modules, otherwise the cost of rebuilding would be critical. Now let's consider the scenario why the developer experience is so important. The first, in the first scenario, a customer comes to you and requests you to develop an application. You develop the application and give it back to the customer. The customer lives happily, but after a few months, the customer comes back to you to request to add new or different functionality that your application already has. But when you are planning to develop the application or modify it, when you go back, what you'll see is you don't actually understand your own code. So in this case, you might actually have to rewrite the entire code. Uh, this is clearly the waste of time, money, and energy. Uh, similarly, the second scenario, the same customer may not come, but different customer with similar request may come to develop the application. So in that case, if you have used uh, the development methodology to develop the reusable application, then you don't actually have to rewrite the entire code from the beginning. The motivation uh, for the developer experience are uh, longevity of the application. That basically means any application that has to be used for a long period of time, uh, which might require you know, changes, modifications, and addition of new features. Uh, we need to focus on that one. Uh, similarly, uh, we should avoid rewriting of the code. Uh, we should improve the code reusability and should be able to add functionality without changing existing code. Uh, the code should also be flexible and robust so that we can uh, easily make changes. So uh, the expertise required for the future proofing of the application is shown in this diagram. Uh, so, for example, if you are communicating with your team members or the fellow developers, uh, even if you are not aware of the software engineering uh, terms, you can say what you require. For example, the lowest stack shows a few of the requirements of your application. For example, the application should do what it promises. The application should be able to handle a number of, uh, you know, it should be able to multiply the outputs or the processes, uh, it should be reusable, that is what we mean by modularity, the code should be readable, otherwise you won't be able to make changes, and finally maintainable. Uh, as you can see, like as we move towards the top, it becomes more and more software engineering, uh, so high cohesiveness and low cobalt is more technical terms to explain the reusability of the code uh, finally, on the top, uh, we got something called object-oriented design. And then finally, on the top is the object-oriented programming and solid principles. Uh, this might sound a little bit more advanced and then difficult to understand, but uh, these are all different methods of writing the code in such a way that you will be able to have more reusable code and you should not be investing too much time and effort on rewriting this similar kind of code again and again. I hope you liked this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll discuss uh, the differences between the traditional task-based approach of application development and compare it against the object-oriented design and finally with the object-oriented programming. I hope you liked this video. Please share, like, and comment on this video and subscribe to the LabVIEW Advantage channel for future LabVIEW videos.